<sighs> so I'm setting things up. Uh, give me a minute. to clone this repo so I'm just gonna go ahead and just start doing stuff here um, for those of you who are wondering uh, today I'm gonna try to do the next gopher sizes exercise or at least get most of the stuff ready for it uh, I'm not feeling amazing so uh, yeah <laughs> this might not be the best stream ever um, so what I want to do let me I'm gonna have to rearrange this and resize this a bit here in a second hopefully that's large enough I want, actually, let me just clone an existing one. All right, so let me get rid of the git stuff. Let me open this up. And then let me rearrange so that you guys only see what you need, or so you can actually see more. Okay. All right, so I think I have the chat popped out correctly. And I've got this up. All I did was clone the Twitter repo, and I'm going to go ahead and just move some of this around, um, specifically this. So what I want to do today is something like a secrets CLI and API. So let me just go ahead and make this in progress. And uh, percent 20 progress. This will be yellow. And this is going to go to slash secret. All right. So rather than writing all this right now, I'm just going to sort of give you a quick rundown of what I expect this to do or what I'm hoping we can get done. So I'm probably going to end up writing some code that I provide. Uh, I'll probably write like uh, a small package that provides the functionality to encrypt a string and decrypt a string. And the reason I'm doing that is mostly because there are a couple minor details when it comes to like encrypting software and stuff like that that it's very easy to get wrong, especially if you don't quite know what you're doing. And I'm going to try to explain that as I go through it today, but I'm not a security expert. So like there's a chance that I'll mess something up. Um, this application isn't something that I'm expecting to be like super secretive anyway. You're not supposed to store like, you know, crazy sensitive information in it. Um, so let me just give you an idea of what I mean. So in the last video, we had a Twitter client and I kept my keys in a file like uh, keys.json. So this had something like, well, this wasn't actually used, but we had the rest of this where we had a consumer key and a consumer secret, and these actually had our information. And then we would read it from the disk, and we did this so that we didn't have to stick our keys into our source code. And, you know, that it's nice as well when you're streaming and stuff like that because, you know, you don't have to have, a, you have that embedded in your source code, so not everybody watching suddenly has to see your keys. So there's a lot of reasons why you generally just don't want those keys in your source code. But um, storing them in a file has the like slight side effect of you know, it's slightly bad side effect that you know anybody who gets on your file system or happens to see the file can all of a sudden like tell what they are. So what we're going to do today doesn't actually it doesn't completely fix that. It makes it a little bit harder for them to realize what you're doing with it, um, but it doesn't completely fix that. And it would allow you to sort of store your secrets somewhere else that's maybe more. Uh, you know, centralized, like if you stuck them on a server and, and maybe the, the secret uh, encryption key you used wasn't part of it. Uh, I'm explaining this poorly. <laughs> um, so, so let me just show you what, I, what this is going to do. So I want something where I can type something like secret, set, uh, and then do like Twitter API key, and then put some value here. And I want this to take some file or some something that gives it a like encryption key and I want it to encrypt this and store it in a file somewhere on my computer. And then later, if I did something like secret get Twitter API key, I want it to output some value decrypted. And then later, once I have those two things working, well, I guess I'm going to end up doing both of these at the same time. But in my Go code, I want to be able to do something like uh, secret, say that's my package, dot, 
I don't know if I'm going to call it a client or what, but whatever. And you could do, um, let me change this. Then you could do something like c.get Twitter API key, and this would return a string returns some value. So the idea roughly is that we can just have something that on the command line, we can write secret set, something like this. And then hopefully when we start our application up, we can have some way that we pass in some config. So maybe we end up passing like encryption key is some key. Uh, and this right here would come from a command line flag. So maybe we had flag dot uh, string, you know, and just had like whatever it is to have this key. So encryption key. And this is probably, I know that's not valid code, but that's fine. So basically we'd have that encryption key being passed. Sorry, give me a sec. We would have that encryption key being something we pass in as a flag. So when we start our application up, we could do something like, uh, something like dot slash app. And then our flag might be encryption key equals, you know, some key. So there's not a huge uh, need for this most of the time. I mean, realistically, if you just stick the file on your, your hard drive, you're probably fine. Um, the reason I say that is that most of the time this encryption key is not going to be like if it's on your system, you have to use it to run. So maybe it's going to be in a config file or an environment variable or something so that your server knows how to use it. It's really not going to help you a ton in that sense. Where it can sometimes be useful is if you wanted to sync this this file that has all your keys, maybe you wanted to sync it up to, to Dropbox, you wouldn't sync your key up to Dropbox. And then you know, you could have that same file synced across all your computers without actually having to worry about people who get that file having access to the secrets. They would need your encryption key to get access to them. So it's nothing like, you know, it's not like something you need. Or it's not something we have to have. But I just thought it would be a cool exercise to see how to build something like this that's a little bit of a mixture between a command line application and something we use in our code. And, you know, it's going to allow us to store these secrets that we have in Twitter and stuff like that. Okay, so I need to start cleaning out some of this code, and I'm going to just start by just writing code to encrypt and decrypt stuff. So that's where we're going to start off. And let me just, I'll just save this and I'll put it to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this directory. I'm going to get rid of keys.json. And as you can see, it's showing keys there, but I think both of those are invalidated at this point. I went and deleted all the keys I used in the real application before I released the exercise. And main.go, we're not going to need all of this, but I'll get there in a sec. Okay, so now we're going to... I think that's everything. Let me just go ahead and just add it all. I want hub create, something like that. So I'm using the like GitHub as a CLI tool that's sort of like a wraparound Git that allows you to just sort of create repos real easily. So I just want to get most of this up here so that I have, so that I have the repo there, and then I'll go through it with different branches later and fix stuff. All right, so we have that, cool. All right, so we're gonna start, like I said, I just want to figure out how to encrypt stuff. Um, so I'm going to make dir encrypt. And in encrypt, I'm going to just write, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to call this. We'll just call it encrypt.go, it's fine. So what I'm pro I'm just guessing at this point. Uh, what I think I'm going to want is something like a. Sorry, got to check a message and okay. So I w what I think I'm going to want here is something like uh, func encrypt, which is going to take in something like a key, which will maybe be a string. I don't know. Probably won't be, but that's fine. And it's going to take in a value that it's encrypt. It's going to take in a key. In the value, it's going to return the encrypted value, which is going to be a string. 
So something like that, um, that's probably not accurate, but it's a good starting point. And then we're also going to want a func decrypt, which is going to take in a key and a cipher, which will both be strings, and it's going to return a string, which is the decrypted value. So like the, in an ideal world, that's all we need. That's not actually going to be true, I don't think, but in an ideal world. All right, so let's do encrypt Golang. And that, I, I hate that this book pops up because it calls things like base64 encryption when it isn't. But ignoring that, I don't think this is what I want. So I know AES is something we, I think that's encryption. Yeah, okay. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to the crypto package and see what they have here. Hmm. I feel like there's got to be something else. So what other subdirectories are there? Let's go look at Cypher and see if there's anything useful here. So we've got these encryptors and decryptors, which might be what we want. I'm not really sure. Sorry, I've got a heater on down here in my basement because it's freezing. <clears throat> so this looks like something we can probably use. I'm not positive, but it looks like it might be. Um, I think the key has to be a certain length, but that's not really a huge issue. All right, load your secret from a safe place. Let's just go ahead and copy this code and see how it works. Or we can just run it here. All right, so this is decrypting this string here. So this looks like the decrypt method. Let's look at the encrypt method. So I think this is the one I originally looked at when I had the idea for this. Looks about right. So I'm going to copy all this, paste it into here. All right. So this first part is the key. Um, I'm going to guess what's this returning? Uh, it returns a byte slice. OK. So our key needs to be a byte slice, it looks like. So we can go ahead and just change that. That's fine. And we're going to assume that this part is passed in. And then we have the plain text. It looks like they're converting whatever the value is into a byte slice. I'm not sure if we need to do that just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just comment that out. All right, so CBC mode works on blocks, so plain text may need to be padded. So I'm not going to... I don't want to dive into all of this stuff. Um, what I'll basically say is that... I don't think this is the right one. I don't think I want CBC. I think this is the one I want, actually. So here we can just do CBC versus CFB. I think those are the two. And these are block cipher modes, it looks like. So I'm going to guess, uh, I don't want to dive into all of this really, <laughs> especially on a stream where I can, can't actually research and make sure I'm saying the correct things. So I think CFB is what we actually want. So there's the decryptor, here's the encryptor. I'm, again, I'm just going to copy the code that's here and I'm going to make use of what's in the standard library examples. Okay, so... I'm not doing a passphrase. Okay, we don't need the key there. The plain text, we're going to comment this out again. Um, here for the block, let's see. AES.new cipher with the key. If there's an error, we panic. Um, it looks like there can be an error. I don't know if we want to, I guess we should just go ahead and have this as a, an error for the time being. And if we find, if we decide later that we want to move this out, we could probably do something to sort of help with that, but I'm not sure. All right, so the IV. So IV, 
I believe stands for initialization vector. Um, the, the short version is that you, you slap some, some text at the start of everything you're encrypting that's kind or some bytes that are kind of random and you do it so that somebody who's like watching your data can't, I guess, essentially try to figure out what your keys are. Um, it doesn't need to be secure. It just has to be something unique. And the way that this code is doing it, if I am reading it correctly, is it's taking whatever the block size is and it's slapping it at the, you know, it's adding that much extra space to the byte slice. And then it's going to um, say that the first block size space is going to be the initialization vector. And then it's reading into that initialization vector with, you know, uh, random from rand.reader. And then that's coming from the crypto rand package, not the math slash rand. That's like a pretty important detail there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna wanna keep this. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep all of this. The only thing we're not gonna do here is the, this is gonna be a value instead of plain text. And we're gonna do return error if something goes wrong. All right, so we create this stream. This stream is an XOR key stream, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. And then we need to, all right. So this last part where it talks about ciphertext must be authenticated. Um, basically what it's saying is that once you get an encrypted value, you should hash it with your key or hash it in some way, I guess, so that later, whenever you, um, Basically, so that later when you go to decrypt it, you can actually determine if somebody altered it or not before you try to decrypt it. So we're going to need to do that as well. So let's go to the HMAC, go lang. And just so all of you know, I, I plan on providing this code as part of the exercise. I don't expect people to actually write this as part of the exercise. Um, there's the check Mac function, but that's not... Uh, I don't know if they have an example here. Well, I was going to copy it and bring it over here anyway. We're probably going to need check Mac down here. So let's just copy this part up here. Let's say Mac is going to be hmac.new, uh, the Shay and the key. Uh, Shay256 is the algorithm we're using, and the key is that key that we've provided up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do mac.write. Um, this is going to be our, I guess, our entire value, so ciphertext. And then we're going to do uh, mac.sum nil. This should return, let me see if I can get it. I don't know why it's like, oh, it's because it can't compile with this. So it's not giving me. All right. So what does some returns a byte slice? That's why. All right. So this is going to be our authentication or yeah. And what is it doing here? Why is, oh, I spelled this wrong. I'm trying to see, okay, there's no other chat stuff. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure it stays up somewhere. All right, so short version of what just happened. Um, I copied all this code and I'm just gonna use it as is. Uh, I, I think for what we're doing in this exercise, I'm not trying to write something super secure. I'm not trying to replace, uh, just so you know what this is inspired by. Uh, there's a thing called Vault by HashiCorp. If I can find it. And Basically, it's a tool that allows you to sort of store different keys and stuff like that and have them, I think you can have them synced across different applications and share them with other developers and things like that. And it does a lot of cool things like that. So this is kind of meant to be a really minimal, you know, simplified version of what this might be. So you can get an idea of like some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. 
Um, so anyway, we first just take all this code uh, and we basically encrypt our value using our key and we're using the AES um, cipher. And in the process of doing, we're using the cipher with the CFB encryptor and then we are, the XOR stream or key stream basically I think is just doing the writing. It's taking whatever's in here and it's streaming it into here um, for the last half of that. And then what we're doing here, uh, we are basically writing an authentication. So we're hashing the value we got back from all of this. And we're going to go ahead and just make sure that when we return both of those, that people can actually verify that the encrypted data we're giving them is accurate. So from here, we want to return a string ciphertext, string auth, and nil, which means that up here, we need to change this to be uh, it's probably going to be cipher auth, and then we're going to have error, error. And I'm naming these in this case because um, I think when you have two strings, it can be unclear what they both are. So in cases like this, I think it's a little bit nicer to name your return variables just so people know what they are. I don't tend to do empty return statements even when I have named return variables like this. I just don't care for empty return statements, but you can use them if you really want to, I suppose. And of course, I guess I could just do auth equals string or whatever is coming back from this and return auth here. And that can't be, that's annoying. It's like super annoying that I can't use the term cipher because it's this, but I could do like, do something like that. Do I use the cipher package anywhere else? I don't think I do. Okay, cool. So assuming this is working correctly, and I have no idea at this point, I haven't tried it, um, this should allow us to encrypt a value with a key and it should give us something back. I think the key needs to be 16 bytes, if I recall correctly. Yeah, if you look at the new cipher, it needs to be 16, 24, 32 bytes. So what I'm actually going to do is come back here to this code we were originally looking at. Um, this is a key that they're using here. So in my main.go, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do something like Key, and this is a bad key, but it's you know it's it's a bad key because it's publicly advertised in the Go docs, so like probably not a secure one, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna make my key, and then I'm gonna do encrypt dot encrypt, and I'm gonna pass in key and some value, and apparently, hmm. All right, github.com slash gopher sizes slash secret slash encrypt. I might have an error in some of my code somewhere though. I don't know what it's complaining about. Oh, there's probably a possibility of an error here. Uh, what did I call this? Oh, I need to export it. That makes more sense. Okay, so I've got encrypt. I'm not going to bother documenting it just yet. I want to do a decrypt as well. Sorry, I want to check, make sure I have this check correct. Okay, um, so we've got the encrypt. Now we need a way to decrypt this. So again, I'm just gonna go straight to the standard docs here and I'm gonna look for there. This was the encryptor, I think. I can. This is a CFB encryptor. I'm just gonna go to the decryptor. Copy all this code. And I don't think this code has anything for checking an HMAC. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. 
So this check HMAC came directly from, I'm going to make that not public or not exported. Um, this check Mac came directly from the HMAC package. So I should be able to just use this. So first we want to do something like, uh, we're going to make a key, which is a byte slice. And then we're going to have a cipher text and we're going to have, or we'll call it a cipher and auth are the two strings that are passed in. So we want to go ahead and make sure that this hash matches. So we're going to do check Mac. And this takes in message, message Mac and key. So I'm going to actually rename this a little bit. So I'm going to make key the first argument so it matches everything else we have. And I'm going to say, and message Mac, which are both strings. And I know this is kind of annoying because I have to convert them, but I, I know I'm dealing with strings more in my other code, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Hmm. Or maybe, yeah, I'll just convert them whenever I do it. That's fine. That way I don't have to rewrite this. And since this is coming from it's coming from here. I thought, oh yeah, it's from the overview here. Just go ahead and comment that real quick. All right. So check Mac is a little bit different now. It's going to take in the key. And I apparently didn't put a comma in there, but that's okay. Cipher is my message. And auth is my uh, it's my message like the, the the hashed version of it that is all right so I need to come down here and put the comma here and this returns a boolean so I need some sort of error here so I'm gonna go ahead and just create one I'll call it var error um, I don't know, corrupt cipher, I don't know. I feel like I'm typing something wrong, but that's okay. All right. So we can definitely return an error here. And I created that error as like a package level, um, as you know, as like a an exported package level variable, because that way people that are using this package can check for this specific error. But some of these other errors that might pop up, um, you know, they might check for them, but they're not ones that are going to be as easy to, for them to handle because they're going to have to know how this was implemented. But this is one of those things that we can give them a more generic error that they can easily do something with and match against. And I don't know why this is like key cipher auth. I'm not sure why it's complaining. Oh, it's because these are both strings. That's why. Okay, so as long as this all goes through, we'll say this is going to verify the authentication string. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is take our key, which we've already done, and the ciphertext we've already got. So we're going to set up another block, and if there's an error with that, we'll return empty string error. And we're going to clean up some of this here in a minute. Or I'm guessing we will. Maybe we won't. All right. This is the initialization vector. It needs to be unique but not secure. So we're going to include at the beginning of the ciphertext. Um, so again, we're going to come up here and create another error. Okay. Um, 
All right, assuming I got this. I'm going to comment this so it stops complaining. Okay, going back here, we've got the block. Now we need to check this. Uh, essentially what this is just saying is if, if the ciphertext is so short that it couldn't even fit one block size, we know our initialization vector can't be in there. Um, so it's gonna have an error. So we're gonna return empty string and error cipher too short. Otherwise we're gonna get the initialization vector is the first block that comes from the ciphertext. And we call both of these cipher in ours. And then we're gonna come down here and this is probably going to end up being a string. So we could turn it into a byte slice right now. And then our cipher text is going to be, I'm just going to colon equals, it's going to be cipher. I'm going to convert it to a byte, a byte slice. And then we're going to create the, the CFB decryptor. We're going to pass in block. So where was block coming from before? That's up there in IV's initialization vector. Oh, it's CFPHR now. All right, so XOR stream, we're going to write it from, we're basically writing right back to the same exact thing. And then if all goes well, we're returning string ciphertext nil. No. So this XOR stream, uh, whenever we call it here, we're doing the opposite, we're, we're decrypting. And this is the source, if I recall correctly. Yeah, the last argument's the source, um, and the destination is the same exact slice. So what we're really saying is as you decrypt it, write the results back to the same slice. And that works fine for this case. Okay, so let's just go ahead and test this to see if it seems to be working. So encrypt is going to give me a uh, cipher auth or an error. Cipher auth error. If error is not equal to nil. Panic with the error. Otherwise, let's just print these out. Um, uh, our cipher. And our auth. And then we'll decrypt. So we'll say plain comma error colon equals encrypt dot decrypt key cipher auth and then we'll print out that plain value okay now I'm just going to try this out and see what we get okay you'll see here that the cipher and the auth are both um, not useful in the sense that they're not really strings um, so what's happening here is that we have a byte slice, but it's not necessarily like a valid string because, you know, a byte slice can have any random byte values. So they don't actually have to be valid ASCII characters or anything like that. So we want to go ahead and make this so it does work with strings because we know we're going to want to store these in like a text file or something, or that's the goal, we hope. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take this down here and we're going to go ahead and, and base 64 encode this. So I think this is going to be auth equals base 64 dot URL encoding. I'm just going to use URL encoding because I'm familiar with it. Uh, encode a string, I think is the method we want. And you'll pass in auth. I don't know if you have to pass in bytes. You probably do. So I probably want to make this. I'm doing like way too many conversions here. Uh, this needs a colon equals. Okay. That appears to be working then. So this is going to take some arbitrary... Uh, Base64 encoding takes some like arbitrary bytes, and it will convert them into a valid string. Uh, specifically, the URL encoding will convert it into a valid string that like you can put in a, uh, a URL. 
but it's not encrypting. Like, you know, you don't have to have a key or anything like that to, to take it and go back to the raw bytes. Anybody can do that. So that's definitely something to, you know, worth mentioning is that this is not encrypting at all. This is just making it into a string that we can then convert back to a byte slice. And then we're going to need to do the same thing. So we're going to say cipher is going to be base64 and cipher text is a byte slice. So this ends up being cipher auth. Okay. So that should do the URL encoding on that side. So now we need to decode them on this side. So we're going to do base 64.url encoding.decode string. And we're going to pass in cipher. We'll do cipher bytes. And then we'll do auth bytes is going to be base 64. Same thing. So now we can come down through here and change some of these. So this is going to become cipher bytes. It's going to be auth bytes. And oh, this can return an error. So if the error is not equal to nil, Um, let me see if there's anything else I got to deal with. So we get the bytes, we do this stuff. I want to make sure we use the bytes in the right spots now, because we shouldn't be using auth and cipher anymore. So this needs to become um, cipher bytes. And this needs to become cipher bytes, because if we use the plain cipher, it'll be the encoded version. So we got to make sure we're not doing that. This is going to be cipher bytes. And I don't actually need to do that part then. The same with this. It's already a byte slice at this point. Okay, so I've got cipher dot decryptor, ciphertext, ciphertext. Um, I think we're good. Okay. Now we can go ahead and try this again. See how we get. So now we have a cipher and an auth. These are both strings. You can see that it's you know a little bit easier to go with those. Uh, we've got the plain text of some value, and that's you know the output value. So that's those three pieces. So it looks like our encrypt and our decrypt are both working. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to create some code that uses this package um, as poorly written as it is, and basically tries to make a tool that allows us to do this sort of um, you know storing values that way. So I'm going to start mine off very very simply. Um, well, actually, I'm going to start off with Cobra. So I think I have a video on Cobra. I'm just going to look for an example here. There's got to be one somewhere. Or gophersizes.com. There's one of these exercises that uses it, but I don't use it often enough that I remember everything. All right, CLI task manager, it's probably this one. So exercise seven. So let me open up the source code real quick. And I've got an add command, a root command. And what I do in main.go, I just start this up. And I even have the home dir stuff here. Okay, that's handy. I'm going to copy all this, actually. So I, I basically just got, this is another exercise as a task exercise. So if you haven't ever done it, you can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just comment this all out, paste this all in. And I don't need these two. I am going to want the home dir. Um, I'm not going to do this, though. This is going to be home, and then I'm going to do secrets dot this is going to be a secrets path it's going to be I guess a text file or we'll just do dot secrets and then we'll do a key path 
and I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to have a secrets key that's going to, I'm going to use locally, and that's what it's going to read from. Um, again, because these two are both stored on the same disk, if somebody got access to your system, they could probably figure most of this out. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, a, you know, a nice way to have it for our code and stuff like that. And then the secrets key could be something that later we set up as something you have to actually pass in as an argument. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and read it from the file system. Or I guess we could just have it as an argument we pass in. Let's see. Maybe we can just do it as a flag. We'll see. All right. So we got secrets path. Um, I do not have a root command though, and I'm not using the secrets path, so I'm just going to go ahead and print it out for the time being, because I don't actually know that I need to do this here. All this probably doesn't need to happen right here. It's probably going to happen somewhere else in my code. That's not where I wanted to go. All right, so I want this root dot go. I grab this command, so I'm going to go ahead and make a directory called command. And then inside of here, I'm going to code command root.go. And this is going to be called secret. Okay, save that in there. And then I'm going to want going to copy one of these other ones just so I have it as an example. Uh, so that doesn't seem to do anything. What did I have? I swear I had it so that one of these is a default command, but I'll fix that later. Basically, I don't want to mess around too long figuring out Cobra stuff right now, so my next command is going to be get.go. So I want the get command, it's going to be get. So this is going to get a secret. I'm just going to go ahead and just get rid of all this stuff for now. And we're going to root command add get command. Okay, so we've got get, and then we're going to want a set. So I'll name the set.go as well, and I'll just go refactor this. So everywhere I've got the word get, I'll just change it to set. Okay, so um, we want to store these in... I mean, I guess right now I don't necessarily have to like make a real nice code for this, but it would be nice um, trying to figure out how I want to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and write the crappy version right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just write all the code inside of this command, and then we'll pull it out and put it somewhere else. All right, so this, what we're going to want to do, let me see if I have an example here. All right, so this right here, I'm just getting all the arguments. All right, so this is going to be there's going to be two pieces here. So there's going to be a secret key. There's going to be a secret um, value, which is going to be args zero and args one. And if either of those like have an error for some reason, it means that like we, you know, they didn't provide enough information. And then what we're going to do is just say. Uh, something like this, just to make sure this is working. This needs to be printf. This is going to be a secret key. <sighs> All right, so that's that. This is the pretend secret. We're just going to leave that be for the time being. Although we could just say secret key. Secret key is going to be arg0. 
and then we'll just do something like I didn't mean let me change this to new line all right so and that's not correct well, oh, I'm the wrong direct no not in the wrong directory I must be using I'm using task slash command I want secret One of the downsides to copying code like that, I suppose. All right, so I need to go build and then run it. All right, secret helps you manage your application secrets like API keys. So we're gonna do secret set, um, Twitter uh, consumer key, pretend uh, we'll just do one, two, three, ABC. All right, so prints out where it plans on doing the secrets as the default file and says setting Twitter consumer key to 123ABC. So let's see what get is. Probably shouldn't have deleted that all, but that's okay. All right, so we got pretend secret. So what we want to do now is um, we're gonna want to open up that path, you know, whatever's at secrets path, and we're gonna wanna use that. I don't remember. I'm just going to copy this code here. I think I just made global variables in the last one, but I'm not going to bother with it, that now. I don't think it's worth doing. Okay, so set. I'll eventually be able to just comment this out because I don't need it. So we've got the home directory, and we're going to get the secrets path, and we're going to do os.open. We don't want open though. I think I just did this in the last exercise. When you do open, it just gives you read access. What we really want is it for it to create the file if it doesn't exist, and if it does open or does exist, we want it to open with permission to write. So we want open file, and I think this example is pretty much exactly what we want. So we can just do it this way, and this file is going to be secrets path. All right, so F isn't used, that's okay. Um, what we want to do is store this inside of our file somehow. So we could just store it directly in the file. You know, we could just slap it in there and, and just add them one at a time. Uh, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, we could use something like bolt DB, probably a better idea, but I don't know that I necessarily want to set that all up. Um, hmm. Let's just, let's just assume it's a JSON file. So let's do new decoder with the file. And then we're going to do a decode. And we need some value. So var. Uh, secrets. It's going to be a struct. That's going to be a slice of structs, I should say. And then what fields are we going to have here? We're going to have the key. And the key, this isn't like the key that was used to hash it. This is like the, the key that we're like indexing them by, sort of. So we're going to have a key, we're going to have a cipher. And then we're going to have an auth, which is a string. It's a JSON. You just call it auth. I think that's fine. All right, so we'll read it into secrets. And then we're going to do, we need to do f.close at some point. So I'm actually going to copy all of this. And I'm going to put this down here and do func. Yeah, this is why this really shouldn't be where it is. Um, that's fine. Uh, 
we probably don't want it to be this format either. We want it to be a map of string. And eh, we'll just do a, a slice of secrets. It's whatever. Actually, I take that back. We're going to do a map of string to call this a secret. And I'm just going to keep it lowercase s. So it's not exported. Paste this all in here, and I'm going to do type secret. This one's going to be like this, but a little bit different. So we're not going to have the key in there. It's just going to be a cipher and an auth. So what we're going to do is this is going to be a map of strings to secrets. Then we're going to JSON decode into uh, I want this to be F and I want this to be in ret. This is going to be file. Gonna make sure we close that file, decode into ret. I'm just gonna ignore errors for the time being, I suppose. Or I could just make this return an error, I guess. to be nil comma error. And then finally we're going to return ret comma nil. Alright, I think that's everything. And then we'll do a func set secrets. Um, this is going to be one of the arguments. And then this probably can return an error. All right, so we're going to open the file just like before. We're going to defer closing it. We're going to do encoder is going to be json.new encoder with the file. Then we're going to do enc.encode uh, secrets. And if the error is not nil, return the error. If the error up here wasn't nil, return the error. Otherwise, return nil. OK, so I think that's get secrets and set secrets. That means up here, we can basically just say there's the secrets path. Um, secrets error is going to be get secrets. Uh, secrets path. This should probably be like secrets file. And then we're going to do secrets, uh, secret key equals secret. We're going to do uh, cipher auth error is going to be what is it? Encrypt dot encrypt. And we need some sort of key, which we do not have. I think I got rid of the old one. Just copy this for the time being and make it work. Oh, I'm probably boring everybody. Sorry, I'm like not very energetic today. So we're going to have key comma underscore. I also feel like I'm just all over the place as far as like coding goes. All right, again, I'm going to get rid of this key at some point, but I think it's fine. Key, and what are we passing in? Secret value. And then if the error is not equal to nil, we'll panic again. Otherwise, we're going to set this stuff to be auth is going to be auth. And I think I have these two reversed. No, I don't. OK. Cypher is going to be cypher. Can reverse those and then we're going to set secrets with secrets file 
and secrets. I'm going to just do one quick panic here. Okay. I think that should work. These two functions really shouldn't be in this file or in that type, but that's okay. I'm going to assume that this key here is something we can provide. Let me go see if Cobra, Cobra, Golang, flags. I mean, ideally, you wouldn't have to pass a, a key in every single time. So maybe it just makes sense to do touch dot secrets key. So we can get our code later to like put something in here. You know, if you don't have one to default one, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and add that secrets key file. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start. Well, I don't wanna read from it yet. Shouldn't have done that yet. I just wanna make sure this works. So we gotta do get next. And this is gonna be very, very similar. Um, we're gonna do this stuff here. We're gonna have the same key and we're gonna get I'm going to go ahead and just copy that part. OK, so we want to do, there's a secrets key. We get the home dir, we get the file, we get the secrets. Then we're going to get the key, and then we're going to say plain comma error is going to be encrypt dot encrypt key. And we have. So I need to do something like So I'm just going to assume this exists. I'm not going to bother checking if it's in there. If it's not, we'll probably just end up with an error here. So we need secret.cipher and secret.auth. I can't type at all. And then printf percent s percent s new line secret key secret we want plain and what is complaining here oh I want decrypt here okay I actually well. <laughs> Where is this getting into an error at? Like, I think it's getting an error because there's nothing in the file. It's probably decryption error. So let's first set a key. So I'm just going to go build, and then I'm going to go ahead and just do it all from there. So go build, and then we'll do secrets, or secret set demo. This is a demo string. Well, that's not good. I guess if the file is empty. It shouldn't. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Um, if the file doesn't exist, we need to like not error. Then we need to return an empty struct here. So, and get secrets doesn't actually need to use this full open now. It just needs to do open. So let me go to the OS package, and there's going to be something up here for uh, open. I know there's an example up top. I'm going to guess they might have something for. Do they have an actual error? That, like, error not exists. There we go. Except I probably already created the file at this point. So what I'm going to do is if we ever get an error here, I'm just going to take the lazy way and I'm going to return this. So I'm just going to get rid of the error that can come back from this entirely and just say that, you know what, we're just always returning ret. So it just might be empty. And that's probably not the best way to go about it long term. But I think for now it's completely fine. Go build.
and I know why it's complaining. I changed this, so I need to change my code. I have an error check right here that I don't need. And that's another stupid error. <laughs> um, okay, I know what's going on. Uh, let me find the code. When I do get secrets, I need to make sure this isn't a, a zero valued map. So I'm gonna do ret colon equals make. So normally this doesn't matter too much because um, I don't have to initialize it because the JSON decode will do it, but there's a chance that I return right here when the file doesn't open. So I need to make sure I actually do that setup. All right, so I did secret set, so let's say get demo. All right, this is a demo string, okay. And I'm using quotes here whenever you have a key that like has a space in it. This is a string with spaces and whatnot. So I need this to set. Okay, so there's like maybe one other thing that we might want. Um, I've got get set. Let me just do uh, list.go. I'll just name everything here to be list, except uh, I want this to be case sensitive. I hate that it doesn't default to that. get secrets, secrets file, and my four key in the range of secrets. So probably new. So I'll do print F percent D total new line. And I'm gonna do length of secrets. And then for each one of these, I'm going to print F. And we'll do a tab, and then we'll do percent %s, and then a new line. And we'll do K, because that's the key for it. That should be everything. I don't need this. OK. All right. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanted with the CLI, but you'll notice that like none of this is accessible like inside of our Go code. We could always like actually run commands and stuff like that, but that's not amazing. Um, we also have the shortcoming where our key, uh, this key here, is not provided via a flag. So we might want to go to uh, Cobra and figure out how to set flags this way and provide it. Um, what I actually think is a good next step, which I'm not actually going to do today because I'm just not feeling that great, but uh, what I think is a good next step is to take all of this code, everything that's in set, list, and get, and sort of move it into a secret package. So create a new package named secret and try to move all of this code into it into some sort of type that manages this for us. Um, and maybe it has some sane defaults, so maybe that type will be the one that handles, you either pass it in a reader that it can read all the secrets from, uh, or maybe a read writer, I don't know, something like that. Um, actually, I don't know if a reader is gonna be the best way. Maybe you do wanna pass it a file so it can actually read and write to it. Anyway. Uh, you you kind of just want to move all this to like a secrets package so that you can actually have a little bit more uh, flexibility in the sense of, um, you know, 
not flexibility necessarily. I, you just basically want to have it so that all this logic is contained within the secrets package. And then inside of your commands, you'll just use that package so that then later in your other code, you could also use that package. So, you know, you just basically can use those secrets both in Go code and on the command line. But this should at least give you a rough idea of what I was planning to set up. I just, I, I can't, I, I can't go any longer today, sadly. I'm just feeling pretty exhausted. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, sorry this, you know, was a short one and I didn't finish the exercise, but I'll hopefully get this finished this weekend if I'm feeling better and release it.